and welcome to part 7 of my Japanese for Beginners series. By the end of this video, you will be able to count in Japanese and you will be made aware of and able to use some of the various counters that the Japanese language uses. This lesson corresponds to page 48 of the Genki textbook, but if you don't have the Genki textbook, that's totally fine. You'll still be able to follow along just fine in this video. So first, a quick note on the writing system. I recently put out two videos, which I will link by my face uh, and in the video description below, on learning hiragana and learning katakana. Now, in the first six parts of this video series, I included um, along next to my face all of the phrases. I included them in hiragana, katakana, and I included them in romaji as well, the Roman script, so that if you didn't know hiragana or katakana, you could still read everything. But this is the first video where I am not including romaji. <laughs> I am just going to be including hiragana katakana, katakana, and some kanji! It's okay, they're like pretty easy kanji in this video. So first, let's just count the basic numbers in Japanese, and I'll show you on the screen what they are in hiragana and also in kanji! Ichi, ni, san, yon, or shi, which is a little less common, or yo, which is even less common. Go, Roku, nana, or shichi, which is a little less common. Hachi, kyu, or ku, which is less common. Ju, juichi, juni, ju sam, ju yon, or ju shi, which is less common. Ju go, ju roku, ju nana, or ju shichi, which is less common. Ju hachi, ju kyu, or ju ku, which is less common. Niju, sanju, yonju, goju, rokuju, nanaju, hachiju, kyuju, hyaku, nihyaku, sanbyaku, yonhyaku, gohyaku, rokuju. 百、700、800、900、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000、1000
Ni hyaku, it stays hyaku. But if you, you, when you get to 300, it becomes sam byaku. And the reason that it turns into byaku is it's just easier to say sam byaku because your lips are already closed from the m mm to just go byaku. You, you just explode from that. It's much easier to say that than to say sam hyaku. You have to like sam hyaku. It's, it's just harder to say. So it's sam byaku. And then um, 600, lopyaku. Instead of roku hyaku, like try to say roku hyaku, roku hyaku, it's so hard to say. So they change it to ropyaku, which is confusing to you when you're learning the numbers and the language, but once you know the language, like you'll be grateful that they changed it because it's so much easier to say. Um, it's kind of the same, uh, oh yeah, hapyaku, also 800 instead of hachi hyaku, like hachi hyaku, that's really hard to say. So it's hapyaku. Um, it's the same with sen. Um, uh, just sen by itself is 1,000, ni sen is 2,000, san zen, it's voiced there, again, for the same reason, because the n, san zen, it's just easier to say san zen than san sen, um, so san zen. Uh, now a note on man and oku. Oku to this day still trips me up. I like always have to look up and Google translate what oku is and it is a hundred million but I can never remember that because it's just kind of like arbitrary to me. Um, and man is kind of the same thing. It really trips you up when you're starting to learn Japanese but man is 10,000. Yes they have their own like number for 10,000. Instead of saying jusen for 10,000 it's man and then it's ichiman, niman, samman, yoman, goman. So and um, when you're dealing with money also, man have their own bills. Uh, so yeah, man is actually pretty important to know, but it's it's annoying when you see like ichiman, nisen, gohyaku, like it's hard to kind of convert it in your brain into what that actually is as a number, how many zeros are actually in it. Uh, but just remember, um, you math nerds might might appreciate it. It might be fun for you math nerds. I mean, it is kind of fun for me in a morbid way. <laughs> but yeah, man is 10,000 and it has its own number and oku is 100 million and it has its own number. So now let's look at some counters. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> okay, if you have no idea why I'm apologizing, uh, Japanese language, you see, it has this thing called counters. So in English, we say one flower, two flowers, three flowers, four flowers. We say one piece of paper, two pieces of paper, three pieces of paper, four pieces of paper, one cat, two cats, three cats, four cats. We just say like the number and then the the noun after the number and that's it like the only thing we really change is if it's more than one we add an s to the end of it to show that it's a plural that's the only thing we really change and i mean i guess in the cases of paper we say one piece of paper two pieces of paper instead of one paper two papers you know there's some little little weird things we do in english but for the most part counting is extremely intuitive you just say the number and then you say the noun not in Japanese. <laughs> so they have different counters for counting different kinds of items. So these counters come in the form of suffixes to the numbers. So first let's look at the suffix for time. O'clock. We kind of have that in English, right? You don't just say one, you say one o'clock, two o'clock. So their suffix in Japanese is ji. So let's just count through the times with this suffix. Ichiji, niji, sanji, yoji. See, this is where the yo comes into play instead of yonji or shiji. <laughs> yoji, goji, rokuji, shichiji, hachiji, kuji, juji, juichiji, juniji. And then if you want to say a.m., it's gozen. And if you want to say p.m., it's gogo. So also a note in Japan, they often count like they use military time counting. So like military is like 13 o'clock for 1 p.m. Um, so they do that in Japanese as well. So just a note. Um, and then for half hours, they use han. So if you wanted to say 1.30, it's ichiji han. So now let's look at minutes. And they have a different counter suffix for minutes. Uh, and it's Pun, hun, or bun. So again, as I mentioned earlier, the ha hi hu he ho line, uh, if you add a little circle, it becomes pa pi pu pe po, and if you add the, the duck ten, the little quotation marks, it becomes uh, babi wu bebo. So hun can become pun. Oh yeah, the suffix is fun or pun, not bun. So ippum, ni hun, sampum, yompum, gofum, roppum, nanafum, or hachifun, kyuhun, 
Jupum, Jupum, Junihum. And then when you get to 20 minutes, it's Nijupum, and then Sanjupum, and so on. So if you wanted to ask, what time is it now? This is a pretty useful phrase. Ima nanji desu ka? Ima means now. Nan, um, that prefix means what. And then ji means o'clock or time. So nanji means what time. Desu ka, you're asking a question. So ima nanji desu ka means what time is it now? So if the time were 11.56 a.m., someone might answer gozen juichi ji gojuropun desu. So now let's look at the counter for age, because this is another common uh, suffix that people are going to use, especially when you're introducing yourself to people, because in Japan it's not at all rude to like say how old you are or ask how old someone, well, I mean, it, it's sort of maybe personal to ask someone how old they are, especially if they're like an adult. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not as taboo talking about your age in Japan as it is talking about your age in America. So anyway, their suffix for age is sai. So let's just count ages now. <laughs> Issai, nisai, sansai, yonsai, gosai, doksai, nanasai, hassai, kyusai, jussai, and juissai. Now it's pretty intuitive. Uh, most of what we just did was intuitive, except for that whole hasai moment there. Um, and it keeps going just like that, as you would logically expect, until you get to age 20, and that is hatachi, for some weird reason. Anyway, hatachi is 20, but everything else is quite intuitive. You, for the most part, you just say the number as you would count it in sequence, and you add sai to the end with some minor adjustments occasionally. Sai is one of the more forgiving counters. <sighs> Now let's look at people. So the suffix for people is nin, and it's written with this kanji, which is a very easy elementary level kanji. Hito means person, but if it's a suffix, um, it, it can be pronounced nin, also means person. Um, so the suffix is nin, except for one person or two people. Those are like really unique exceptions. Uh, and unfortunately, they're also the most commonly used uh, counters. You know, you're usually talking about one person or two people more often than you talk about three, four, five, six, seven people. So remember those exceptions. Let's go. Hitori. Not even close to ichi, but let's keep going. Futari. Yeah, that totally sounds like ni, doesn't it? <laughs> but it means two people. Futari. Sanin. Okay, now we're more intuitive. Yonin. Again, it's just like yoji. It's not yonin or shinin. It's yonin. Gonin. Rokunin. Shichinin or nananin. Hachinin. Kunin or kunin. And junin. So the rest of it's pretty intuitive. Once you get past hitori and futari, everything else is pretty intuitive. But now let's look at the basic counter for things. <laughs> so this is one of the most important counters to learn because even though there are so many different counters, there are dozens of counters in the Japanese language, um, you can get away with like just using this one basic counter to describe all things, okay? It doesn't matter what the thing is like, it doesn't matter what category that thing is in, you can, you can get away with using this basic counter for all things and people will understand you and you won't sound too terribly weird. However, uh, throw all of that ichi ni san shi go roku that you learned counting earlier, just throw that out the window because it's basically, you're not going to recognize any of these numbers. All right, let's go though. Hitotsu, futatsu, nitsu, yotsu, itsutsu, mutsu, nanatsu, ah, oh, that one's recognizable, yatsu, kokonotsu, So now I'm going to tell you guys how to use um, numbers with their suffixes to describe nouns. So as I said in English, if you want to say like three uh, coffees, you just say three coffees. You say the number and then you say the noun. And that's basically the number is like an adjective to describe this noun in the English language. But it doesn't work that way in Japanese. So it's actually kind of the reverse. You'd say kohi mitsu for three coffees or mitsu no kohi. 
So remember no from the no possessive video. So it's the coffee of three or th uh, or coffee three. So you're listing basically the coffee first and then you're describing um, how many of them it is. If you wanted to say two students, you'd say gakusei futari or futari no gakusei. So the students two or <laughs> <laughs> two of students. So as I said, there are dozens of counters in the Japanese language, and if I went over all of them, this video would be like 20 hours long, and uh, if enough people watched it, it would give me a huge algorithm boost, but I'm not going to torture you guys or myself by going over all of the counters. Way too much information for a beginner anyway. Um, so I'm just going to go over a few very commonly used counters right now. I'm just going to list what they are, um, but don't worry about these. Just be aware that they exist, and you will learn them later if you continue with your Japanese education. But for now, just be aware that they exist, but don't worry too much about them. All right, so my is for flat things like paper. Hom, pong, or bom is for long skinny things like fingers or pencils or pens. Satsu is for like whole volumes of books or magazines or manga. Hiki, piki, or biki is for animals, not humans, animals. Uh, dai is for large machinery, like cars. Ko is for small things, and small is kind of relative. It can be basically something like earrings that fits in the palm of your hand, or even a hat that fits in like two hands. Uh, and then N is actually a very useful one and a very intuitive one to, to use. You mostly just like say the number as you would count numbers normally, and then add N at the end of it. So it's not yen, it's M. Um, but you don't pronounce it with a hard glottal eh in the N. It's very soft, so it winds up sounding kind of like yen. Thanks for watching this very long video. The next video in the series will be a lot less uh, on your brain. It will be a lot of um, more everyday uh, phrases that will help you get by in your daily life in Japan. Thank you for watching and thank you to all my patrons for supporting this series. And I will see you in the next episode. Mata ne!